five seconds. I am honored to be present here with President and Secretary General and other leaders at the launch of the UN Democracy Fund. This was proposed by President at the UN General Assembly last year and has received widespread acclaim. Its relevance is underscored by its becoming a concrete reality in just a year's time. May I take this opportunity to express our solidarity with the people of New Orleans and other regions devastated by the destructive fury of Hurricane Katrina. Mr. President, you have our sympathies and support in your efforts to bring relief from pain to the people affected by this disaster. Excellencies, India is proud of its democratic heritage which is rooted in the country's cultural traditions of tolerance, respect for different viewpoints and a ready embrace of diversity. Mahatma Gandhi led us into a non-violence struggle not only to free India from colonial rule but to also ensure to our people the exercise of their democratic rights. To him, it was clear that the end to colonial rule would mean very little unless the broad masses of the people of India were empowered with democracy. We were also inspired by the ideals of freedom, equality and justice that were the hallmarks of the great French and American revolutions. India's awakening to freedom in turn inspired freedom movements in Asia and Africa. A whole family of independent and proud nations took their place on the world stage. India sympathized with and supported their struggle to become masters of their own destiny. For us, the democratic ideal is a common heritage of mankind. Those fortunate to enjoy its fruits have a responsibility to share its benefits with others. As the world's largest democracy, it is natural that India should have been among the first to welcome and support the concept of a UN Democracy Fund. We believe that democracy based on universal adult suffrage empowers the most humble citizen of our country and give him a sense of dignity. Poverty, illiteracy or socio-economic backwardness do not hinder the exercise of democracy. Quite the contrary, our experience of more than 50 years of democratic rule demonstrates how democracy is a most powerful tool to successfully overcome the challenge of development. But most of all, democracy alone gives the assurance that the developmental aspirations of the poorest citizens of our society will be taken into consideration by such programs. I bring the best wishes and felicitations of the people of India to this August Assembly meeting in its historic 60th session. India has a special regard for the United Nations. The ideals of the UN run parallel to our own civilizational ethos. This is the ancient Indian concept of Vasudev Kutumbakam or the whole world is one family. It is this idea of a shared destiny which encouraged this August Assembly five years ago to adopt the Millennium Development Goals. May I take this opportunity to convey our deep 
condolences and sympathies to the government and the people of United States on the widespread destruction caused by Hurricane Katrina. At the turn of the century, there was growing recognition that the contemporary challenges of pandemic diseases, environmental depredation and terrorism demand a global response. At the same time, there was hope and optimism. The world community welcomed advances in science and technology, which made it possible as never before in human history to confront these challenges. We had confidence in mobilizing the collective will and wisdom of nations to herald a new era of peace and prosperity. Five years later, we find that the international community is generous in setting goals, slow in pursuing them. We must therefore make greater efforts to mobilize the needed resources to meet the Millennium Development Goals. This would be a wise investment for the future. Failure will only make our task in the future more difficult and more costly. We in the developing world face a dual challenge, the domestic one of managing political, economic and social change in an environment of rising expectations and growing disparities as well as the global challenge of securing an international environment conducive to meeting our developmental aspirations. These challenges are interlinked and success or failure will affect us all. We welcome the agreement reached on the draft outcome document to be adopted tomorrow. It is a roadmap for the work ahead to reorient the organization to meet the challenges of the present. India will be a willing participant in this process. All of us assembled here recognize that the United Nations is in need of urgent and comprehensive forms. The management of global interdependence requires strong international institutions and a rule-based multilateral system. The reform of the United Nations must be based on this principle. It must include the expansion of the United Nations Security Council in both permanent and non-permanent categories of membership. Unfortunately, the United Nations suffers from a democracy deficit. Its structure and decision-making processes reflect the world of 1945 as such, not the world of year 2015. Unless the UN becomes more representative of the contemporary world and more relevant to our concerns.